Are you tired of hearing about how there's a terrible drought around the world and within five years we're all going to be selling our internal organs, the important ones, for a half gallon of fresh water, which by that time we'll call life juice? Then this is the video for you. Those of us who gave a shit have been saying for decades that the climate crisis would impact us all. The mainstream media has essentially ignored it, basically never covering climate change. And if you're thinking, mainstream media covers climate change all the time. No, nah, no, they don't. They cover the impact of climate change, like droughts, fires, hurricanes, but they don't connect it to climate change. In fact, most of the time, they won't even say the words climate change. For example, take Hurricane Ida just last year that destroyed parts of Louisiana. In their coverage, six of the biggest commercial TV networks in the US, ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox, NBC, and MSNBC ran 774 stories about Ida from August 27th to 30th, an analysis by the watchdog group Media Matters found. Only 34 of those stories, barely 4%, mentioned climate change. That's insanity. It's like doing reports on a, on, on, on a major gonorrhea outbreak in town without mentioning that the Hackberry filling station has a buy two, get one free deal at the glory hole with lines around the block. I heard from someone. But I wanna focus on the solutions to drought. We're seeing the shocking impacts of drought across the US. Bodies of water around the country are drying up. Earlier this year, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration predicted that the 22-year mega drought affecting the West would not only intensify, but also move eastward. About 82% of the continental U.S. is currently showing conditions between abnormally dry and exceptional drought, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor. But also, rivers all over the world are running really low. Rivers all over the world are running really low. That sounds like a bad thing. We kind of need water to live. Did you know that if you, if you took your body and you pressed it through a strainer, separating all of the, the, the bits and pieces, you would find that 60% of those molecules are water. I mean, you wouldn't find that because you'd be a, a bloody, disgusting pile of like mucusy bits of bone and flesh, but, but other people could, could look at it and find that. So perhaps not only should our media be talking about this mega drought and connecting it to the climate crisis, but here's an insane idea. How about also giving solutions other than just cutting fossil fuels, which yes, we have to do. Here are a few of the solutions to drought. Desalination plants, taking the salt water of the oceans and creating fresh water. Did you know there are now some 20,000 facilities globally that turn seawater into fresh? Because there's like a lot of ocean out there. But most, there's mostly ocean out there. Right now there are 11 desalination plants in California alone and 10 more on the way. So there's two problems with desalination. One is the cost, but considering the U.S. spends a trillion dollars a year on our military, aka murdering people overseas, I think we have enough money for water. I'm, I'm, I'm not bitter. I, I, I support the troops. I, I think drone bombing a guy on a roadside kiosk selling old shoes is a, a, an important use of my tax dollars. Hi, CIA. I hope you like the episode. But there's a second problem with desal, as the cool kids call it. There's no cool kids in the world of desal. The second problem is desalination requires vast amounts of energy, which in some places is currently provided by fossil fuels. Yeah, so we're using desalinators because of the drought, because of climate change, which is largely caused by fossil fuel use, but the desalinators mostly run on fossil fuels. Shit, it, this is, that's not good. This is like that time I broke up with my ex-girlfriend by telling her I was gay, and then I had to date a guy to prove it, and I didn't know how to, to break the news to him that I wasn't gay, so. We had an awkward, sexless two-year relationship before I finally told him I was pansexual. I only make love to cookware. But there are other solutions to drought that your media will never tell you about. For example, how about recycling water? Recycling sewage into drinking water is no big deal. They've been doing it in Namibia 
for 50 years. Namibia is one of the... Excuse me. Namibia. Thank you. Namibia is the only country that gets most of their water from recycling it. And no one gets sick. No one dies. The water doesn't taste like the underside of Andre the Giant's balls. And I get that you may still be going, gross, recycled water? Ewey. But here's the thing. The way they recycle it mimics how water is recycled in the natural world. They just speed it up. You see, and, and I know this will blow your mind, but the water you drink right now out of the tap or out of a bottle of water has also been recycled. Those droplets have circulated the world. They have been through the digestive track of a construction worker in Taiwan, a fish in Spain, and a reindeer in Norway. Every drop of water you excitedly gulp down and go, ah, has probably been up close and personal with some person or animal's ripe Lincoln logs at some point. So quit your goddamn whining. We could also save a ridiculous amount of fresh water by ending fracking. Fracking consumes a massive amount of water. In the U.S., the average can run between 1.5 million and 9.7 million gallons of water to frack a single well, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. And there have been 1.7 million fracking wells in the U.S. But because our media is bought out by fossil fuels, they won't tell you about the psychotic water usage in fracking. They hardly tell you anything about fossil fuels. The media is also heavily bought off by big agriculture, big ag, which is why they won't tell you the number one way we could conserve water around the world. Stop eating so much meat. I'm talking to you right there with a piece of ham hanging out of your mouth, drinking a warm cup of gravy, and for dessert, honey glazed bacon, liver pate, lamb fries. What kind of animal genocide had to happen so you can have lunch and watch the game. Look, I'm not saying you can't have a dog on a stick at the ballpark sometimes, but just chill the fuck out with the mass slaughter. It's getting ridiculous out there. About one third of the world's water consumption is for producing animal products. According to data from the Pacific Institute and National Geographic, a single egg takes 53 gallons of water to produce. A pound of chicken takes 468 gallons. A gallon of cow's milk takes 880 gallons of water to produce, and a pound of beef takes 1,800 gallons of water. Growing crops to feed animals killed for food consumes 56% of water in the U.S. 56% of the fresh water in the U.S. is used for animals killed for food. That's crazy. We wouldn't even be in a drought at all if KFC didn't make a fucking sandwich with a bun made out of fried chicken and a tray made out of bacon and your receipt is printed on finely cut buffalo tongue. Sometimes officials of a city will tell people to stop showering so much to save water. But showering doesn't matter. One burger equals two months of showering based on taking a four minute daily shower. So these assholes will tell us to share a shower but won't tell us to decrease meat consumption to save water because Big Ag owns everything. There's no big shower. There's no shower company that owns CNN and calls the president and says in a deep voice, we don't like what you've been saying about the showers. Why don't you cut it out with all this shower coverage or it'll be the end of your little news network. <laughs> Also, we're going to let all the air out of your car tires just, just, to, just to, as an extra fuck you. But that type of thing does happen when it comes to criticizing meat. I mean, something similar. Look, we're facing drought that will impact us our entire lives. The climate crisis will impact us our entire lives. And yes, we must stop fossil fuel use, but we must also start looking at solutions and move beyond are corrupt politicians. The vast majority are scam artists and parasitic, vacant-headed sludge pots in suits. We can no longer turn to them to save us and save our future. Even Greta Thunberg said so. Just the other day, she wrote, 
We should abandon the illusion that our politicians will come to the rescue of planet Earth, especially those who delight in calling themselves climate leaders. Time and again, they have betrayed the faith that has been placed in them, using greenwashing and PR strategies disguised as politics. That's it for now, but the most censored news comes out twice a week. Please click subscribe and share it with friends. Also, we are completely independently funded, so join us on Patreon and join the free email list by texting the word censored to 33777. Keep fighting.